Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So, I don't usually start videos outside, but today I have a reason. The building behind me is 875 Carling Avenue, and while today it's home to the Canadian Meat Council, in 1999, suite 210 of that building was the Ottawa Sales Office of Silicon Graphics Computer Systems. Now, I don't know much about the office. I don't know what products were kept in stock, if any at all, how big the staff was, or what the room even looked like. But it is still cool to be within walking distance of something that was at some point related to Silicon Graphics. So in the first part of this series, we're going to go over the history of these guys, starting from the Iris 1000 and going all the way up to the Personal Iris and the Power Series. Before next part, we will pick up at the Iris Indigo and start into the 90s. So here we go. In 1982, Silicon Graphics was founded by James H. Clark of Stanford University, along with seven graduate students and research staff. A year later, they released their first product, the Iris 1000 Graphics Terminal. It was a Motorola 68000-based graphics terminal, which connected to a normal mainframe such as a DEC VAX and provided graphic capabilities. While the device had separate CPUs, could sometimes use hard drives, and even ran SGI's GL2 operating system, they were not full computers, and still had to connect to a mainframe for most of their processing. Just three years later, in 1985, SGI released the Iris 2000, which developed their earlier terminals into independent Unix workstations. Earlier 2000 series systems used 68010 processors, while later turbo models used 68020s. The 3000 series was similar, but featured SGI's new geometry engine, marking the first time 3D graphics acceleration had been widely available. SGI's Motorola-based systems culminated in the Iris 3130, which was powerful enough not only to be used separately from a mainframe when working on scenes, but to render completed animations directly on the workstation. In March 1987, SGI released the Professional Iris 4D60 with an 8 MHz MIPS R2000 CPU. This was the first SGI to use a MIPS processor, and it was far from the last. It had a base price of $74,000 and placed its power supply and storage devices in a separate box connected only by the base. Now is a good time to mention that to go with their new MIPS hardware, SGI released a new Unix operating system known as 4D1. Version 4D1 4.0 was the first version to be referred to as IRIX, and the next major version was known simply as IRIX 5. Back to hardware. Just over a year after the Professional Iris launched, in October of 1988, SGI replaced it with the Personal Iris Workstation and the Power Series Visualization System. While earlier systems had been available in a wide range of configurations of varying performance, this was the first time a clear division between desktop workstations and large high-performance visualization systems had been made, a trend that SGI would continue for the rest of their life. So as the 1980s ends, SGI is a reasonably successful company with two reasonably successful product lines. But all of this is about to change, because the Iris Indigo is only a year away. And it was a big deal. So this was only the first part of what will probably be a three-part series. But if you did like the video, then all the same, please subscribe, as we're still a very, very small channel, so it will help Dodoid grow. And until next time, bye.